Let's practice this function called HLOOKUP. If you're familiar with VLOOKUP, this should be quite easy to understand. So I recommend you understand VLOOKUP first. The letter H stands for horizontal, whereas the letter V for VLOOKUP stands for vertical. So this is essentially the same function as VLOOKUP, except we just have to think horizontally. So imagine we have some information. Most of us are familiar with the idea of being graded. So if you receive a grade of 0%, you generally fail. If you receive a grade of 50, we'll just say you pass. And if you receive a grade of 80, you get a B. And if you hit the 90 threshold, you get a grade of A. Notice how this information, this lookup table, is organized horizontally. If this information was sorted going down vertically, we would use the VLOOKUP. So let's see how this works. The information here for this lookup table must be sorted in ascending order. Ascending means generally increasing. And you can see that the numbers 0, 50, 80, 90 are getting bigger and bigger. They're ascending. So this is correct. So we did it properly. So we'll say that we have a student named AAA, BBB, CCC. The parents of these children weren't particularly creative. So here are the students' names. Now what about their grades? We'll say the first student skipped every class and received a grade of 35. We'll say the second student received the grade of 73. And we'll say the final student was an overachiever and received a grade of 95. Let's see what kind of grades, letters, they receive. So what we'll do here is click on this cell or anywhere. We're going to type in equals H lookup bracket and you can see that we have a nice hints here, the lookup value. The value that we're interested in looking up to see the corresponding letter grade is 35. So I'm gonna click on thir this one here, 35, and it gives me J3. J, column J, row three is this cell here, comma, table array. So where is that lookup table? It's here. So I'm gonna click on D3, drag all the way to G4, make sure it's all selected here. And you can see that we're interested in this table D3 colon G4, comma. And what row index are we interested in? What row? Are we interested in spitting back this row three? Or are we interested in spitting back row four? We already have the number 35. We're not interested in this row up here. We're interested in the actual letter grade or the, the actual word fail or pass or B or A. So we're gonna return this row index the row index of two. So the first row, row index of one, would be the first row, and the second row would have a row index of two. So you can see that 35, 35 falls into this first category, and the row that is spit back is fail. So this is correct. Now a lot of people would actually, would try to use autofill by clicking on this and move to the bottom right, and there's a little black plus sign there, click, left click and drag, and you can see that something weird happens. Even if we make this wider, the results are incorrect. What's going on here? I'm going to press Control Z or Control Z to undo. And the key here is when we have this nice H lookup formula is that this lookup table needs to be locked in. What's happening is Excel is using the idea of relative cell referencing so that every time we autofill this formula here is looking at this information and it's and it's looking at this lookup table and it's shifting down automatically that's a topic for another day so let's just try to fix this up how do we lock this table into place let's click on this formula here I'm gonna click up here in the formula bar and j3 to d excuse me d3 to g4 this, these values here, D3 to G4, is this actual table. So I'm going to lock it into place, make it absolute rather than relative by using these dollar signs. So I'm going to press dollar sign there, dollar sign there, dollar sign, dollar sign, and press enter. So what we essentially did here is we use the same formula, but we locked this table into place. So now I can use autofill. I can drag it down, pow, pow, pow. And you can see here that student BBB passed. And this here particularly saves time when there's a lot of students and 
And as you change the student's grades, if I change a 73 to a 99, you can see that the student B gets an A now automatically. Everything adjusts properly, which is excellent. Now we should pay attention to the extreme cases here. What if the per student gets a 79? The student passes. And so here, according to the VLOOKUP table, the HLOOKUP table, the grade of 80 is the threshold. So as soon as they get an 80 on the dot, that's when they achieve the next milestone. That's when they achieve the next level. They receive a B. So let's uh, finish off this tutorial by taking this uh, table and just uh, showing you how similar this is to the VLOOKUP. So if I were to right click and copy this, or Control-C, I can right click and I can paste it and we can even paste it using the transpose, the transpose option right here, which is the fourth option. And you can see that this here is your standard VLOOKUP table and we would use the, the actual VLOOKUP formula. So if I were to just copy this information here, Control-C, Control-V, and we want to get the grades, I would type in equals VLOOKUP, bracket, the lookup value is 35, comma, the table would be over here. And of course, you can click up into the formula bar and you can lock in that table if you wish with dollar signs. And comma, I want to spit back the second column. And so press enter and you can see that we also have this, the correct message. So the reason why we're using H lookup is because we're dealing with actual rows rather than columns. So when we choose this H lookup formula, the question here is which row do we want to sit back? And that's because we're thinking horizontally.